Soundboard Basics Feedback Procedures One of the most difficult and challenging things about running a soundboard is dealing with feedback. Feedback is that nasty squeal that builds, and essentially what happens is that some sound source is recorded and comes out of the speakers loud enough that it reaches the original source where it went in. So you speak into a microphone, the sound comes out of the microphone, bounces off the walls and the carpets and everything, and is loud enough that the microphone is able to pick it up again. And then it goes through a second time and it's amplified all over again. So the same sound becomes amplified again and is a little bit louder. Then because it was loud enough the first time to get all the way back to the microphone, now that it's been amplified again, it's going to be coming back into the microphone a third time. And this builds and builds going over and over again and a ringing builds which then becomes a squeal and it can be very unpleasant and disruptive to a service. Now if your equalization settings are appropriately set, you shouldn't have feedback. So for every speaker, there should be a computer box or a, uh, an equalizer with sliders that allows you to tune that speaker for the room. Most uh, installations today, there's a computerized box that allows somebody who's a professional to go through and very accurately tune the equalization to make sure that the most reflective frequencies for the room are turned down and the uh, sounds that need to be heard most clearly are turned up. And so what you do is you take a microphone and you put it in the middle of the room and one at a time you adjust every band on the equalizer to find out where the room is reflective and where the room is not reflective. Because in any given room, the placement of the speakers and the surfaces that that room is built out of affect what the appropriate equalization setting is. So you want to make sure that your room with your equipment is tuned so that it's appropriate and will be balanced in terms of the EQ overall. What we do on a Sunday morning with the equalization for each individual channel is very subtle and uh, last minute. It needs to, to take hours to set up the room properly with equipment before the typical soundboard operator ever sits down at the desk. But occasionally, we do have problems with feedback, and there are a number of different things that you can do to deal with that. The first thing that you can do is if your main speakers are up at unity gain, you can drop them down a little. Because your, your first task is to figure out where the feedback is coming from. And pulling down the mains a little bit drops the sound overall coming out of the main speakers and gives you a moment if that is where your feedback is coming from. Dropping down the main speakers gives you an important piece of information because if you drop the mains down and the feedback either is lessened or disappeared, then you know that the problem is with your main speakers. If it does nothing to affect the sound that is feeding back, then you know the problem is likely with the monitors not with the mains. You can turn the mains back up and you can bring down your main on your monitor channel. Then if the feedback drops off, you know that the problem is somewhere in your monitors. Essentially what we're doing is by process of elimination, figuring out where the problem is. Either it's somewhere in the main speakers or it's somewhere in the monitor speakers and figuring that out quickly is essential. Once we've determined whether it is the mains or the monitors where our problem is, we then need to figure out which individual channel the problem is occurring on. And there are a couple of things that you can do. First of all, you see these red and green lights here. Those indicate whether and how much signal is passing 
through that particular channel. So if the green light is lit up, then you know that there's signal going through there. If the green light's not lit up, you know that there's not signal going through there. If the red light is lit up, you know that way too much signal is going through there. So look for solid green lights or solid red lights. At the same time, you've got your mute buttons just below that. And so look for any channels that should be muted but are still open, particularly the pulpit mic and the piano mic. Because the, the pulpit mic and the piano mic are both uh, a type of microphone that very easily will cause feedback. The pulpit mic should never be active when the band is playing. The piano mic sometimes is active when the band is playing, but leaving it on when the piano is not in use can cause serious problems. If you're getting feedback, your piano mic and your pulpit mic are the first two things that you need to check and make sure that they're muted so that they're not coming through the channel. Once you've determined that there are no channels which are on which shouldn't be on, then you get to the stage where you've determined that one of the channels that's currently in use and should be in use is your problem. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is isolate that channel if you can by moving the slider individually for that channel up and down and see if dropping it slightly affects the, the ringing of the feedback. If you find a channel where you draw down the fader and the, the feedback is corrected, then simply dropping down the, uh, the fader may be a, 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 a sufficient solution. But if you can't fix it just by dropping down the fader a little bit, you might need to adjust the trim or the uh, auxiliary send going to the monitor feed. Uh, if that doesn't fix it, look at your equalization settings and see if one of the equalization settings is set very high. If that's the case, then draw down that equalization setting. Essentially what you want to do is find the channel that is causing the problem and find if any of the dials on that particular channel are set too high. That is your basic procedure for dealing with feedback. If you've done your job correctly setting up the channel, you shouldn't have problems with feedback. So as a, a good rule of practice, set your dials before the service starts and then leave them alone and control everything with your mute button and your fader strip. Managing feedback is one of those things that inspires panic very easily. You hear that ringing and you need to find out very quickly what's causing it and how to fix it. It is uh, a source of anxiety and frustration and fear and the thing that you worry about most as a sound tech. You know, if the sound is a little bit out and it's not ideal, you can be forgiven for that. But as soon as that feedback starts and that squeal starts to build, every, every head will turn towards you and everyone will wonder what it is that you did wrong. You may not have done anything wrong. You may have turned something up that you shouldn't have. You may have not paid attention to something that should have been muted. Whatever the situation is, learn to ignore the sharp looks that are sent in your direction and quickly and effectively uh, determine where the problem is and turn down whatever is set too high.